Hello, welcome to this video where we introduce limits. It's a series of videos and um, the goal is to motivate uh, limits in these first couple of videos and then we'll get to actually finding limits and why we care about them. My name is Nakai Rimmer, I'm trying to help you through this, this calculus journey and uh, let's get started. When were you first introduced to a tangent in a math class? Um, should have been in a geometry class maybe and uh, you had a circle and you drew a line that came and only touched the circle at one point. That tangent line to the circle intersects the circle only at that one point, and that point is called the point of tangency. Great. So now you took an algebra class, you moved on, you're introduced to functions, or maybe that was before that you were introduced to functions. But anyway, um, now we are interested in finding the tangent line to the graph of a function. So um, generically, here's a function, and in um, at a particular point, there are two lines drawn there. Um, the one line is the tangent line. The other line is just a, a random line that goes through that point. Um, the, the, the issue is that for a circle, yeah, it can only touch at that one point. It can't touch any place else. But for a function, it's perfectly fine for the tangent line to later on basically touch at touch the graph at some other point. Um, we're interested in um, this point of tangency and finding the slope of that tangent line. We don't know why yet, but uh, we will. <laughs> so um, let's, uh, let's take a, a deeper dive into this. To understand how to find the slope of that tangent line, we first must understand how to find the slope of a secant line. What is a secant line? Okay. So a secant line to a circle, let's go back to circles again. Um, that was a line that went through the circle, crossed the two, to hit it, intersected two points. Um, and the, uh, the piece inside the circle was called a chord, but the line that um, continuation of that is, the, uh, is called a secant. All right, so now let's go back to the graph of a function. Let's connect two points. The, the connection of those two points is called the secant line to the function, okay, on that interval. All right, you start at x equals a, and then you have x equals uh, x as, the, as the, um, the, the right endpoint. You plug those values into the function, so the y value at a is called f of a, the y value at x is called f of x, and we can um, use that as an approximation to the slope of the tangent line. Um, the further away you are, the, the worse the approximation is. We're going to find out. And so um, we want to be able to approximate it, but we're going to find out we need to get really close. And that's going to introduce limits to us. All right. So how do you find the slope of the secant line? It's the rise over run, slope of any line, right? Rise over run. So it's the change in y divided by the change in x. So we have the y values. We can just subtract them. f of x minus f of a, that's the numerator. And then x minus a, that's the denominator. That fraction there is the slope of the secant line. All right, great. What we want to do is go to a specific function and use it to calculate secant line slopes in, in a, in a, as a means to figure out the slope of a tangent line. So our function is going to be x over x plus 1. The, the point of tangency that we're interested in is when x equals equal to 1. And so x equals 1, we have this tangent line. I want to find the slope of that line. All right, and the function is x over x plus 1. We're first going to start with the interval from 1 to 4. So you plug a 1 in, x over x plus 1. 1 over 1 plus 1, it's a half. You plug a 4 in, 4 over 4 plus 1, that's 4 fifths. You have your two points. Find the slope of the line that connects those two points. So we'll track 4 fifths, subtract 1 half, <laughs> divided by 4 minus 1. Great. We'll end up with 3 tenths over 3, which is... One tenth. The secant line slope is one tenth on that interval, one to four. Our slope for the tangent line is more than that. We have a steeper line. And so we want to uh, move a little closer. So we go from one to four. Now we're going to go from one to three. Okay. So uh, the tangent line is the one that's in black there. The secant line is in red again. And we plug a 3 into our function. Remember, our function was x over x plus 1. So 3 over 3 plus 1, that's 3 fourths. 
And so 3 fourths minus a half on top of 3 minus 1, that would be the slope of the black line there, the secant line, the second secant line. And um, when, this will be a little easier. 3 fourths minus a half is basically just 1 fourth. And then we uh, divide by 2. So we get 1 eighth for the slope of the secant line from 1 to 3. All right, great. Doing wonderful. All right, now 1 to 2. 2 over 2 plus 1. That's 2 thirds is the y value there. And with these two right next to each other, hopefully you can see the, uh, the fact that the, the, the line from 1 to 3, secant line from 1 to 3, compared to the secant line from 1 to 2, um, 1 is a better approximation to the, to the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line. Um, the, the closer the interval is, the better the approximation is. And so we're going to um, have 2 thirds minus a half all over 2 minus 1. Great. 4 6 minus 3 6. So we have 1 sixth. That's going to be the slope of the secant line over the integral from 1 to 2. All right, let's put them all together and let's actually do a video here. It's pretty neat. All right, so this is uh, the secant lines are in green, the tangent line is in blue. I should have kept the same colors, but uh, and so the point behind all this is that as the gap between one and the other point decreases your secant line slope approximates the tangent line slope. Okay, uh, I was trying to stop it right at the point where I failed, but okay. There we go. <laughs> so, the, and you can even go the other way. You don't have to approach from the right-hand side. So this is uh, um, the, in the video that we were approaching from the other side as well. So let's just make the gap one-tenth. Let's make it as small as possible. It's hard to see the line there, but the line is there, and that's a secant line. The tangent line, I mean, they're, they're almost identical, right? So 1.1 um, over 1 plus 1.1 is 1.1 is, is 1 .1 over 2.1, which you can just call 11 over 21. And we're subtracting 1 half, and we're dividing by a tenth. Common denominator 42, we end up with 1 of those 42s over 1 over 10. 10 over 42 reduces to be 5 over 21, and that is strikingly close to the actual slope of the tangent line. And the gap was only one tenth. Okay, you can go to a computer and, um, you know, at this point, that was pretty much as much as we should do by hand. We go to a computer, if we make the gap one over 100th, we'll end up with a number for the slope of 50 over 201. One over a thousandth, we'll end up with a slope of 500 over 2001. And so we're guessing. We don't know. We don't know the actual value. Uh, eventually, we, we will calculate the actual value, but we make an approximation. Say, hey, it looks like a fourth. These numbers are tending to one fourth. Okay. Now, um, let's uh, end the video here. Uh, we'll look at the velocity problem in the next video, and it, and then eventually we will make our way to limits. This is, whole series is the introduction to limits. And so what we just did there, we will formalize that as a limit. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, helping you through this journey. Um, please like and subscribe, comment down below, and uh, reach out to me if you need any help. Um, and uh, see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.